Hi guys and welcome to this, my video on Minimum Spanning Trees. Yes, actually this is the end, the last video I think of the General Maths Unit 1 and 2 course. And if you have been watching all those videos, this is where the stuff gets real, it actually crashes in. Uh, pun intended. Uh, anyway, um, and it actually sort of makes sense. And the more difficult questions uh, sort of start to present themselves. Now if you don't know who I am, my name is Darren from MathsGuru.com and it is a pleasure to be able to try and make maths more interesting and engaging, entertaining and what have you for you guys. Yeah, the only thing I ask in return is if you will subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on TikTok. Yes, I'm way too old to be on TikTok. I know, I know, I know. But if you can do that, it actually just tells me you're watching. That's all. Never going to be rich, never going to be famous, but I just want to know that sitting in this room talking to myself is actually helping people out there. So turn off notifications if you don't want to be spammed by me, which I'm not going to do anyway, but that will be greatly appreciated. Now, what do I do? I talk about what I'm going to do in this lesson, learning objectives, right? Well, we're going to know what a tree is. We're going to know what a minimum spanning tree is. And by then we're going to use something called Prim's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree. And this is all useful for the general maths course next year as well. So if you get a good foundation in this, awesome but make sure you've got your summary book with you and if you want the notes that I'm writing on you can download them from mathsguru.com as well you can head over there sign up it's all free and uh, the notes are downloadable all right so let's get going in this now there's been a lot of language and that's why your summary book is really important we know what edges and vertices are Eulerian stuff Hamiltonian and so it goes on having just given my kids an exam they had their summary books, their summary books were outstanding. All of them did phenomenally well because it's, you can't not do well if you've got a brilliant summary book. But let's go with what is a tree? And as you can see, yes, there is <laughs> the cheeky tree. I know, couldn't help myself. It's a pretty nice clip up. But a tree is not very useful for the topic we're gonna to do, as in that tree. But a tree is where graphs are connect concerned is a connected graph, no loners, that contains no cycles, no multiple edges and no loops. Now remember, a cycle is basically where you start at one vertex, go through others and end up back at the first one. Multiple edges is where there's more than one way to go between two vertices. And a loop is literally that. It is a join from a vertex back to itself without passing anything else. So you can't have those. And if you can see, example is always key, put those in your summary book. This here is a brilliant example of a tree. Why? because basically all those points are connected together. No loops, no. Nah. No cycles, nope. And no multiple edges, no. And again, same here. This is another brilliant example of a tree, yes? All of those vertices are connected to one another, but I don't have any loops or cycles or multiple edges. Now obviously here, and I try and unsee this now all right i can see a guy with a laptop bag on a pogo stick can you see it can you see it because you're never going to be able to unsee it but in here there are all the things that make this not a tree so as you can say here i talked about the loop right you can't have a loop where it starts at a vertex and goes back to that same vertex without passing through anything else you can't have a cycle Right, what I'm doing there is I'm starting at one vertex and going all the way through other vertices and ending up at the same vertex. And obviously here there are multiple edges because there are two ways to go between those two points there. So those are all the things that cannot be. And of course, questions and exams are going to give you these type of diagrams and say, well, okay, is it a tree? Or draw a tree. Yeah, and again, not the tree tree. All right. Now, there is a rule connecting edges and vertices in a tree, all right? And so if you have a look here, how many edges do I have? And how many vertices do I have? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, let's try again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are eight vertices. How many edges are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. Mm, interesting. Now, one result on its own isn't enough to prove a rule. So let's see what we can do here. How many edges are there? and how many vertices are there. So let's have a look. Uh, let's count the vertices first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 11 vertices. How many edges are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there are 10. Now, I could keep doing this with trees, uh, but what we can tell is that a tree is basically where the number of edges is one less than the number of vertices. And again, exam questions can ask you that. If there are eight vertices in a uh, graph, uh, how many edges would it have for it to be a tree? All right, well, eight minus one is seven. 
Now, a spanning tree, and believe it or not, these are all spanning trees as well, is uh, a tree which connects all of the vertices in a connected graph, right? So a spanning tree connects all of the vertices in a graph. And again, these two examples are examples of spanning trees. All the vertices are connected, yes? And the edges are connecting them. Now, one of the great things is for a graph, and if we have a look here, this is now a graph. It is in fact a weighted graph or a network because we've got sort of numbers on those edges, right? So uh, we would assume this was some real world situation. But what we've now noticed is there are red lines. Why are there red lines in there? Because that is a spanning tree, right? We have connected all of my vertices. There are all of my vertices connected by those red lines. Now, interestingly, for diagrams, and I've said interestingly, knowing full well that this is the least interesting thing, interestingly, um, there are lots of ways of drawing spanning trees from diagrams. Lots, and if that's not the only one. If I was to take this out and turn it away and do another one, there are other ones that could happen so long as you are connecting the vertices with the lines, and always one edge less, yes? But what we're leading to is actually something called a minimum spanning tree, he says, going forward and then coming back. A minimum spanning tree allows me to go all the way around a network, connecting all the points, but in the least possible amount of distance that we can. Now, think about water pipes, right? Now, I know you don't normally think about water pipes, but if we look at all the houses connected together, we could connect water pipes to every house to every house. We could have thousands of water pipes everywhere, but we don't. We connect the houses to a water network so that actually we use the least number of pipes. It keeps the cost down. And so if we actually look here, that one there, yes, that to me makes perfect sense to use that as a connection between those two points. Why? Because I'm going to only use, say, one kilometer of pipe. Again, here. All right, where else could I use? Well, this one here, there is a one kilometer as well. I could use that one. That's a minimum connection. And when I work my way around the diagram, finding all of these minimum points, then by the end, if they're all connected together, all my vertices are connected together, then we have a minimum spanning tree. All right, so again, this is all language, but there is an algorithm called Prim's algorithm which again is just a sequence of things you do over and over again. And here is the worded version. Take it out, put it in your summary book. If that is gonna be helpful to you, or write it in your own words. But I'm gonna do an example now of Prim's algorithm. Now the good thing about Prim's algorithm is you do not have any constraint on the point you start with. You can choose any point you like to start with. I'm gonna choose point A, just cause it's this one here, all right? There is my point A. Now. You look at all the lines that are coming off A and you choose the smallest one. Because again, the minimum spanning tree, we want the minimum distance to get me around this network. Well, in that situation, the minimum distance is two. Ka-ching, there's my first part. Now, I've got A and B connected. I'm looking for the next smallest line that comes off of either A or B. And if we look at it, we've got an eight coming off B. We've got a six coming off B. We've got a five coming off A, we've got a six coming off A. So which is the smallest value? Well, in that situation, it is the five. So there we go, I've now got three points connected. Now, because minimum spanning tree, and a tree cannot have a loop or a circuit, I now know that I cannot connect B and D together. So what I'm now going to do is I put a cross through there to say I'm not going to be able to use that one now because otherwise it's going to create a circuit and I can't do that. But I go back and say, right, I've now got A, B and D connected to my network. Out of all of those three points, where is the next smallest line coming off of it? So we've got an 8 coming off of B, we've got a 3 coming off of D, a 6 coming off of D, a 7 coming off of D, and a six coming off of A. Well, hopefully you'll realize therefore that that there would be my next choice because three is the smallest of all of those numbers. And a lot of people go two, two, two. Why didn't you choose two? Well, because it's not currently connected to my network. So what do I do now? Well, I look at it and I go, right, is any number now not allowed? 
And I, hopefully you will say, yes, I can't have the eight anymore. Why? Because if I connect B and C together, I'm going to have a cycle or a circuit. No good to me. Yush. Oh. But what do we do now? We've got A, B, C and D connected. So I'm looking at all the lines coming off of all of those and trying to find the shortest one that's coming off. So we've got a five coming off of C, we've got a six coming off of D, a seven coming off of D, and a six coming off. Well, again, my smallest would be that five there. I can't do D to E, so I would ignore that six, but to keep this lesson relatively short, we'll just say now we're not gonna choose the six. Well, where is now the next shortest line that's coming off any of my lines or, or my vertices? And hopefully you realize in that situation, it would be the two. And believe it or not, we're now done. We don't need to do any more because all of my vertices are now connected. How do we check we've got the right number? Well, we're gonna look at the number of vertices, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So there are six vertices. Have I got five edges connected? One, two, three, four, five. That is my minimum spanning tree. And what it means is if I was a water company, I don't need this pipe or that pipe or this pipe, or that pipe, or that pipe, to connect all of those places together to give them water, and I've done it in the smallest possible way. And generally speaking, the next part of the question was say, to add all those together, and say what would be the minimum length of cable, or, uh, or pipes, to be able to connect all these together. Now, I wouldn't normally do VCAR questions this early in the general maths course, but because this is such an important topic, I thought I'd pull a couple of questions in and show you how they can use them, right? Always good to know what to look forward to. And here is a question from, what does that say, 2019. It was a fairly nice question for Prim's algorithm. The following diagram shows the distances in meters along a series of cables, my mind's already thinking, connecting a main server to seven points A to G in a computer network. The minimum length of cable in meters, so I've again, Whenever I see minimum length of cables, my mind is pre-programmed to go, this is Prim's algorithm. Right, required to ensure that each of the seven points is connected to the main server directly or via another point is. All right, so we've got to find the minimum distance. So we've got to do Prim's algorithm. I'm starting at the main server. And in that situation, they sort of told you how to connect to the main server, but we should theoretically speaking still be able to get there regardless of which point I started with. Right, what have I got? Smallest value coming off. The smallest edge is either I've got 36 coming off, 15 or 33. Well, in that situation, 15 is my smallest edge. I've now connected A and D together. I'm looking for my next smallest edge that comes off of A or D. Sorry, the main server or D. I keep saying A, I don't know why. Main server or D. What have we got there? 36, 28, 33, all right, so we've got a 28 coming off there. There we go. Right, so now I've got main server D and E connected. I'm looking for the smallest one that comes off of all of those. So what choices do I have? A 36 coming off there, a 35, a 30, or a 33? Well, 30, as far as I'm concerned, seems to be the smallest value. There we go, that's my next line. And I just keep going. Every time I join a new point, I'm looking at what comes off of those and the old ones to see what's next. Right, let me see, what have we got here? We've got a 36, a 35, a 40, a 35, a 33, and a 32. All right, well, there we go. I think that's my 32. Now, I cannot connect F to my main server because that would create a cycle. So I'm gonna ignore that one from now on. I'm just gonna look at A, E and G. So I've got a 36, 35, 40, and a 35 coming off. Oh, I've got two 35s, which one do I choose? Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna choose that 35 there, and I'm gonna keep going. All right, I've now got the connection between C and B in play. So what have I got? I've got a 36 coming off between the main server and A, 35 between E and A, a 40 between G and B, and a 38. Well, again, I think 35 is my smallest, so I'm gonna connect my 35. Right, I've only got one more point to connect. So to get to B, I'm either gonna take a 28, a 40, or a 38, and I think in that situation there, it's gonna be a 28. Now again, it shouldn't matter where you start, you should always get exactly that thing there. And the question goes on to say, what is the minimum length of cable? So this is where you would add them all together. So let me see, what have we got? We've got 15, we've got 28, 35, 28, 30, 32, 
and 35. Now, obviously, in your exam, you'd be able to use a calculator. Let's just see what I come up with in my head. 18, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So automatically, I'm hoping my number ends in three. Well, if I look down my list here now, there only appears to be one that ends in three, but let's just check to make sure it all adds up properly. One, three, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 203. And so in that situation, I would choose B as my correct answer. Now, as I say, that's a fairly simple Prim's algorithm question, but the testing your understanding in an exam, do you understand what is going on here? So you'll notice this question looks very, very similar. This was 2020. The network below shows the distance in meters between campsites at a camping ground that has electricity. All right, again, there's some sort of connection. The vertices A to I represent the campsites. The minimum length of cable required to connect all the campsites is 53 meters. Hold on a moment there. They've given me the answer. They've given me that it's 53. The value of X is at least right. Okay, so what I actually do here is it because X is going to be on my shortest path. I keep that in my head. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to start at G. I could start at the outside, but remember for Prim's algorithm, it shouldn't actually matter where you start. And I'm actually going to say, well, let's assume that that value there now is on my sort of minimum spanning tree. The rest of the algorithm just plays in as normal. So from my point G and E, I'm going to find the shortest way off. I've got a 9, 5, 8, 10, 11, 5, 6. So I'm going to color in my 5. There we go. So there's my 5 colored in. Well, what else have I got? I've got an 8 coming off between E and D. I've got a 7, a 6, a 9, a 5, an 8, a 10, 11. Right, okay. So again, I think we've got another 5 here. And that's my smallest number. Let's keep going around. I've now got a 6, an 8, a 10, 11, a 9, a 6, a 7, an 8. So 6 seems to be my winner. So again, I'm going to color in my 6 here. And again, notice how I just keep restarting every time I do this. Right, I can't choose the 10 between I and H anymore. Why? Because it would create a circuit or a cycle. I can't choose the 7. So in which case, the only number I've got left here is a 6. Rightio, so where do we go then? Well, I've got a seven coming off of A. I can't use the eight coming off of A. I've got an eight coming off of E, a 10 and 11. So in which case, I think that's gonna have to be the seven. Right, where do we go now? Are all my vertices connected? Nope, keep going. I've got a 10, an 11, or an eight to choose from. So I'm gonna choose my eight. And then hopefully the last one I've got here is my seven. Now I always do a check, a visual check. Have I got all my things connected? I do. All right, so we now want to find the minimum length of cable. <clears throat> we know all of those numbers add together to give me the minimum length. So let's just add them together. I've got seven and six and five and X and eight and seven and six and five. Let's just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. And we know all of those must add to give 53. If X is actually on my minimum spanning tree. Right, so let's add up what we've got here. So seven and six is 13. That gives me 18 for those numbers there. These numbers here are gonna give me 15, 20, 26. If I add together my 18 and my 26, I get 44. So 44 is all of the numbers added together plus the X must give me 53. Oh dear me, what number then? 44 plus what gives me 53? X would have to be nine in that situation. So our, for that minimum spanning tree there, X would have to be nine. And as it stands, that's the end of this video. Hopefully it has been useful and all of this graph theory has been great. Please do me the favor of subscribing to YouTube, follow me on TikTok, um, or just leave me a comment telling me whether that was useful. Hopefully I'll see you back in another series of videos. But for now, I'm gonna sign off. Please stay safe and take care.